So Credit Corp is a business that listed in uh, 2000, so it's been around for some time. Our core business is debt purchasing in Australia. That involves buying past due debts, debts that haven't made payments for six months or more to the original creditor, being a bank, a telco or a finance company. We buy those past due debts once the bank's exhausted their collection efforts. We pay a discount to the face value outstanding and our job is to collect more than we paid for those debts, enough to cover our costs and make a return. And that's how we operate in our business. That is our core activity. We have diversified into uh, into consumer lending. Uh, consumer lending to the sort of consumers that have had trouble with credit in the past and therefore have a credit default and can't access finance from a mainstream bank uh, and their only alternative are a whole lot of predatory and very unsustainable products. We provide them with a very sustainable alternative that's very affordable uh, and flexible and meets their needs and, um, uh, and complies with uh, responsible lending. In addition to that, we've expanded into the US and so we are now also purchasing debts in the US. Uh, now, um, uh, the industry in Australia has probably had a checkered past. Uh, around about 10 years ago, uh, a number of companies had a, had a bit of difficulty, went through a period uh, uh, just prior to the GFC uh, where companies including Credit Corp purchased heavily. Uh, sometimes paid too much for the debts they bought, were unable to uh, get a sufficient return uh, and that affected earnings uh, for a period. Uh, since then Credit Corp's worked hard at improving its operations, improving its efficiency and its effectiveness. Uh, it's invested heavily in its analysis of the portfolios it buys and, um, and make sure uh, that, it's, that it pays a price that ensures it delivers an appropriate return. Uh, and so uh, it's very much a reformed organisation. We now have uh, 1,200 staff, in excess of 1,200 staff, working for Credit Corp, a uh, much smaller organisation back then of only a few hundred. Look, there's essentially three things, and uh, I think you've, you've really selected one of the core ones, which is analytics and discipline uh, is key to everything we do. We have a large group uh, called our analytics team, staffed by a number of qualified actuaries, uh, and their job is to price risk, risk in both our lending business and also our debt purchasing business. So they provide us with forecasts, looking at all our past data, mining through all our data uh, of what all our assets will deliver for us. And when we are pricing a new asset, uh, they'll provide us with analysis that determine uh, what sort of returns we'll be able to get, how much we'll be able to collect from those assets, what it will cost for us to, to do so and the time over which we'll get those returns and we back that into our return criteria to determine a price. Uh, and uh, we religiously stick uh, to the numbers over the years. Uh, we've refined our models to an extent where they are now very accurate and so we can provide nice high prices uh, that are competitive and meet the requirements of our clients, the major banks and finance companies and telcos in Australia, without the risk of overpaying and losing money. Uh, and so that's very critical. We also need very strong operations. It's a very labour intensive business. We're managing 1,100 people uh, working hard every day in our call centres across Australia, the Philippines and the USA. Uh, and so that's very important. The other thing we need to do is uh, be very compliant and sustainable. Our clients demand it of us, of, it, of us, our, uh, our shareholders demand it of us, and, uh, and even our people do, and it's the, the right thing to do. Uh, we have a number of stakeholders. Uh, so we follow all the laws and guidelines uh, in Australia. In fact, our standards go well beyond them in all our businesses. We're not involved in any activities that could be designated as predatory or, uh, or unsustainable or, or anything uh, investors and other stakeholders uh, would not wish to be associated with. So we provide our clients with strong brand protection. Uh, an association with Credit Corp uh, is never going to be something that, uh, that one of our clients or other stakeholders is going to be embarrassed about. Yeah, look, so our lending business is the most sustainable alternative in the Australian market for people who have limited uh, credit options. Uh, and in fact, that was demonstrated just today. I think there was an article that appeared in the press uh, from one of the Consumer Action Law Centres, a, a very vocal group, 
uh, actually congratulating Credit Corp for its products and, uh, and in fact, um, our exit uh, from a particular type of loan product called a small amount credit contract. So uh, in Australia, uh, a lot of people with poor credit records, their only alternative uh, is a payday loan. Uh, which is regulated under under a, a type of product uh, that's specified in the legislation as a small amount credit contract, which is a loan of less than two thousand uh, dollars for a duration of less than twelve months. Typically, payday loans are in fact much less than that in duration, uh, generally only a month or so. The critical issue with a payday loan is that there's a concessional interest rate cap, uh, which uh, which works out. Uh, to many hundreds of a many hundreds of percent, up to four hundred percent per annum. Uh, so it's a very high cost product on an interest rate basis. It's a small amount that's advanced, but it's paid back over a very short term. So they're often marketed as a short term solution that's very quick and easy. And you take out one of these loans, you repay it back over a very short period, so you don't have debt hanging around with you for a long time, and then you move on and uh, get on with your life after having repaid the debt. The real problem with those products is the fact that because it's such a short duration that they're repaid over, the repayments are very high and they're often unaffordable for the consumer. And so what happens is the consumer has to defer other living expenses to make the repayments and so they need to borrow again and they come back again and again and again. And so what is originally a short term product ends up being a long term indebtedness at very high cost. We have seen examples of consumers who've taken 10, 12, 15, 20 in succession until they've eventually collapsed under the burden of the uh, interest costs. Um, that is essentially what mo the option for most people in Australia who are excluded from mainstream credit. Our product uh, is not a small amount credit contract. Uh, it doesn't fall under uh, that section of the legislation. There's no concessional interest rate cap, so we're regulated just the same as all the banks and finance companies, uh, and we charge an interest rate that is around one-tenth of that, which is applicable uh, to a payday loan and well under the cap that would be applicable to the type of lending that we're doing. We're, people are repaying their loans over a much longer duration, uh, sort of six months uh, to two years, three years, uh, and therefore the payments are quite low and affordable. We're doing thorough underwriting to ensure that the payments are affordable. So, so when someone borrows from Credit Corp, takes out one of our loans, they don't need to defer living expenses. They don't need another loan to make the repayments. It's an affordable and sustainable product, and so it's a very viable option. And so that keeps us away from all sorts of adverse scrutiny, uh, from regulators, from the uh, from uh, politicians and other areas and it's actually providing a solution so rather than being uh, part of a problem you know if someone's financially excluded and can't, can't obtain finance it limits their ability uh, to live like the rest of us who can access finance when they take out a payday loan in many instances in the majority of instances I would say their situation actually gets worse over time when they take out one of Credit Corp's products it delivers them with financial exclusion in, in a way that is safe, affordable and sustainable um, and therefore is part of the solution. It's actually enabling them to sort of reach all their ambitions in their lives. Yeah, so our US business, we've worked hard at it over a number of fronts. So we've had to do two things so, or two things have had to happen effectively for us to be on a pathway to success in the US. Uh, so over the last few years, we've been losing money in the US, a small amount, a few million dollars each year. Uh, this year, just through operational improvement, uh, we will get the business to break even in the latter stages of the year. Uh, so that'll be an improvement there. The other thing that has been the case uh, with the US business is that uh, debt buyers have been paying prices which are unsustainable, too high. Uh, none of them have been able to make money, in our view, on the purchases that have been made over the last few years while prices have been too high. The good news is, uh, now we are seeing signs in the commentary from major debt buyers and also uh, in some of the pricing we're seeing in the, uh, in the tendering processes that we're participating in now, uh, that prices are falling. Uh, uh, we need prices to fall by around 15% from where they are today uh, and then we have a business can, that can make the same target return uh, that we task all our businesses to achieve 
uh, the same return that we make when we make a debt purchase here in Australia. Uh, so that, that basically means uh, we can accelerate our purchasing in the US. If pricing meets our return criteria, we'll buy significantly more than we did last year. We will staff up our facility. So we have a facility in Salt Lake City, Utah uh, that we have developed over the last three years. It has 140 staff uh, and it has capacity uh, for another 90. Uh, we outlaid 35 million buying debts uh, last year. In order to achieve break even over the latter stages of this year, we will also outlay 35 million. Uh, but there is the prospect uh, that we will increase purchasing if we see the prices fall to our targeted level. And, and uh, that will enable, uh, enable us to grow up to the, the capacity of our site and potentially beyond. And the idea would be uh, we could with fairly managed growth in a market environment that is rational, uh, where our prices, where the pricing is rational, uh, we can uh, achieve a business uh, that is um, that is outlaying about hundred million dollars a year and delivering uh, an NPAT that is about a half the size of our current core business. So that's around twenty million dollars a year, uh, which is a very solid business for something we uh, we developed from scratch organically uh, just four years ago. Uh, because we're a sort of a finance business, what's probably more relevant is our, is our sort of bottom line profits from each and we do, do manage them all, all sec uh, separately and that's really what we're targeting uh, to achieve. So I'll probably talk in those terms if it's okay, but in terms of sort of after tax earnings, we'd probably be looking at, um, uh, at just under half our earnings still coming from our core debt purchasing business uh, in Australia, uh, possibly uh, around uh, around 30 percent uh, from, uh, or sorry, around 40, 45 percent from our core business. Uh, we'd probably uh, be looking at uh, from the lending business uh, around 30 percent from the lending business and another 30 percent from the US. It, with the products that we're presently originating, which are uh, a sort of a, a fast originated cash loan product. Uh, amounts of up to $5,000 over terms of up to three years, uh, tailored for people uh, with poor credit records who have trouble getting uh, finance from mainstream lenders. That market, just for cash lending, we think we can grow the book to a bit over $200 million per annum over the next few years. Over the last seven years, our earnings growth and EPS growth has been around 22% per annum. That's the average. Uh, in the current year, two thousand or the year just gone, 2016, our earnings grew by 20%. Um, we are guiding at 13 to 18%. Uh, we think, you know, given the prospects of our business and where we start the year with a very sizable loan book uh, that has now reached critical mass, where it is. Um, uh, generating increased level of prof profitability and driving towards uh, pro forma returns, uh, that, that those, uh, those levels are achievable. Obviously, as management, our job is always to achieve and exceed uh, the expectations we set ourselves. So, uh, uh, so, you know, we're firmly focused on the upper end of that guidance range and, um, uh, and if we outperform, we'll, be, we'll obviously be delighted. But we think that's, that's one of the strongest um, uh, earnings guidances I guess we've ever been able to provide at this early stage of the year so it's uh, the business is in very good shape uh, and, and the strength of the guidance demonstrates that. 50% is the number for us given our growth profile uh, and the fact that we want to maintain relatively low gearing. Uh, we feel like all our businesses are entering a period of opportunity uh, and rather than have to you know, continually go to equity markets and raise an additional, additional capital, uh, if we keep our gearing low and leave ourselves with substantial headroom to raise that gearing in order to fund capital to drive the growth uh, and opportunity that we see across all our businesses, we think that will uh, reward shareholders uh, in the long run uh, better than a heightened payout ratio.